I'd like to call to order uh, Board of Health meeting May 24th. It is 6.01 p.m. In attendance is um, Delshawn Flip, health agent, um, Amy Phipps, administrative assistant, Janine Oliver, administrative assistant, Cecilia DeRosa, chairman, Michelle um, Kennedy, uh, member. Do I have a motion to open up the meeting? Motion. I guess I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, meeting is open. Um, first item on the agenda is going to be the signatures. And we have the bill vouchers right here. You sign that one. Okay. Okay. So, Delshawn, this is, um, explains to me, it looks like we hired somebody to do like a mapping. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Is that something we do like annually uh, no, or? We just started it. It's okay. a new thing that okay. um, it, it's a benefit for the truck group. Okay. And how does it benefit us? Um, so that when there's a substitute driver. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Then we have abatements. I have gone, uh, Michelle, do you have any questions regarding the bills? No. Okay. Um, I have gone through these. These all look fine to me. I do as well. Do you have any questions, Michelle? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. We have our permits. Um, I just want to back up real quick on sure. the, um, the vote to approve um, the um, bill vouchers totaling $2,448.50. Uh, we need a motion. Sure. Do I have a motion for the bill vouchers? Motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then have we signed the abatements as well? So we need a motion. Okay, I need a motion to approve the abatements. Motion. Totaling $589.47. Motion. I second that. All in favor? Aye. We have these permits. Animals. Swimming pool. That you signed all these? No. Okay. Those ones you signed already. Okay. No, you don't have to. Any questions, Michelle, on these permits? Anybody else, any questions? Good. Um, all right, next are the minutes from last meeting. I already read through these, so we're good. Any questions on these, Michelle? I make a motion to accept the minutes from our last meeting, April 26, 2022. Do I have a motion? motion. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda, budget analysis. I know that this was going to be a little bit challenging because I didn't give you much time. So um, whatever we got, and then if we have to, we'll just table the rest of it for the next meeting. Um, so what do we have for this? So I think the first thing is you'll see the permits for the year. Yeah. Um, so um, between the animal, food, holler, pool, tobacco, and camp, 
in mobile home, we have um, we take in twenty three thousand one hundred dollars. Okay, that's for the entire year. So that's for the fiscal year twenty two so far. So far, so okay. We only have about a month left, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. All right, perfect. Any questions on those? I mean, those are pretty basic. That that's how much we make for every permit we <coughs> hand out. Perfect. Okay. Um, the next one, you'll see the trash receipts. Um, this was a little bit. Um, so, <clears throat> so far from the month of July to mid June May, uh, we've taken in one million six hundred and twenty one thousand three hundred and twenty four dollars and fifty cents worth of um, trash receipts. Um, we have abated fifteen thousand six hundred and two. So what we've taken in is six hundred and five thousand seven seventy two. Um, less the abatements, um, and then the what we committed was one thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars and one hundred eleven dollars and seventy eight cents. That's what we committed. If you take the difference between what we've taken in for trash and what we committed, you'd see that thirty thousand three hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty cents roughly is what we ha hasn't been paid in trash fees. Okay. Fiscal year 22. And who do we commit? Who do we commit to? Three. We, we commit to the tax collector. Okay. So what happens now? Um, we they would go to lien. Okay. The, the the ones that didn't pay. Okay. For fiscal year 22. Okay. Perfect, I get it, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so we, the um, Board of Health has two or three budget line items. Mm -hmm. One of them is the Board of Health budget. And you can see that we have overdrawn on both of those, sundries and the professional and technical. Um, that the money that we go over will bottom line budget. So it will take from other um, items that we have left to spend. Okay, and sundries, I'm assuming, would be? Um, WB Mason, basically, mostly. Okay, and professional and technical? That would be meetings that I've had to attend um, since, also since we do not have a licensed sanitarian, um, we have to hire out for uh, perk tests. Okay. <coughs> So the top, the top number is what we were budgeted for. Correct. Okay, and that's what we've. The subsequent ones are what we've spent in mm -hmm. actuality. So we now need to pull that money from another area in our budget. Correct. Okay. Okay. The waste budget is the bigger budget. Obviously, we know this is where um, the um, the landfill, basically, like the. Verizon phone that comes out of um, there, the refuse, which is the recyc um, the trash and recycling service pickup. Mm -hmm. The disposal is um, where we take the um, tonnage to, the end site. And hazardous waste is when we have hazardous waste days, mm -hmm. um, people can sign up and bring hazardous material, but we still have to pay for it to get disposed. Okay. And then the data processing, you'll see how we're over budget on that, and that was because of the split from the trash being billed separately. Okay. Um, do we have anywhere the money that we bring in for the um, recycling center? Oh. No. Okay, that's I all right. Didn't, I didn't get to the, I didn't do the revolving. Okay. Did I? I thought I did. I thought I did. I didn't print it. Okay. No, that's okay. We can get a little, we can tighten it up I a little can, bit. I can email it to you. Perfect. I have it printed. Um, I just didn't print it. Okay. <clears throat> and then obviously the last one is payroll. 
I did not tally it. I apologize, but um, I sure can guy. send you a revised one. Do we have a budget for payroll for the year? Were we budgeted for this? Yes. Okay. Do you know the amount of the budget? I don't know the amount because each one is separate. I just gave you a lump sum of everyone's. Okay, so you're budgeted separate, Amy yes. would be separate, Janine would be separate. Janine's separate, okay. Kathy's separate. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, why do we split the trash bill now from the water and water sewer trash? Um, because trash um, is billed differently quarterly, oh. on a different quarterly basis than water and sewer. Water and sewer are metered accounts, so they're a little bit different. Okay. Um, and um, I thought it, I think it would be just efficient, wise, when um, separating out the payments. I think it was a decision by all departments, along with the town accountant. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me just make sure I understand all this. So, the areas where we make, where we bring money in, we have the permits. We have the recycling center, which you're gonna send over to us. Um, we have the trash receipts, obviously. Mm -hmm. What else are we missing? Where else do we bring money in? That's basically it. Those are the? Those are the only things okay. that we actually bring money in. Okay. Then our costs are um, the, the Board of Health budget um, for the um, professional and technical and the sundries, the waste budget. Now, this includes the budget for the recycling center, correct? It does not. It, it does, does not, not include, okay. No, um, the waste budget is not, does not include the recycling center, no. Okay. It only includes bills that are generated like, the, and the only bill that's generated at the recycling center is um, Verizon. When I say like at the, the landfill. Yep. Um, so that Verizon bill is part of this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically the only thing that we're missing here so that we can get a better um, picture of what's going on yeah. is the... I could just go and print it if you want. I think I have it all done. It's okay. What we can do is that'll be better because it'll give us time over the next 30 days to look through it, yeah. see if we and have maybe, any questions. And that's a revolving account, so that's totally different okay. than this. In that, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you had mentioned that um, operates kind of on its own, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I mean, if, if, if these are all the numbers, I mean, this isn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be. That's oh. part of the recycling center budget. Oh, so that's okay. the recycling center? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Are we missing anything else? That's it? I think so, yeah, to the best of my knowledge. Okay. How do you feel? Do you have any questions about it or? I think when we have the other one, we can sit down and just go through it together. But We'll have to do it in uh, open session. Yeah. But, yeah. We can do it at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're good. Um, exactly what I was looking for, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is the follow-up to the new dumpster guidelines. I guess I need to sign them. Yeah, I went back to the meeting and, it, and what had happened is I had, I had not printed the Signature page. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I will send them to you, and then any questions that you have, because I'm really not certain that um, the office has the uh, the ability to on all the dumpsters that are in town. We have um, a basic understanding of how many dumpsters, but um, a lot of the places don't fall under our authority, uh, like Commercial Street, um, Commerce Way, all those um, big uh, commercial buildings all have dumpsters it's I I would ask the board's assistance in in getting 
a better count. I don't think that we have the ability to get a better count on all of the dumpsters in the town. All the commercial dumpsters. All the commercial dumpsters. What happens is, is the haulers, when they fill out a permit to haul trash out of the town of Rockland, they have to provide us with a list of customers. So what we did is we took those lists of customers and we, we broke it down. The other issue is there are there could be people working in the town of Rockland that don't are not permitted. Um, and if I don't know about them, I just don't know about them. Working in the town, uh, give me an example. Working in the town who aren't permitted. Uh, let's just pretend troop is not permitted in the town. It's just a facetious thing because troop is permitted. I understand. But let's pretend they're not. And they're not like a big company like troop. Probably a bad scenario. Um, but um, a little mom and pop guy or whatever that is just doing dumpsters and I don't know that they're there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we would have the ability. So I think that um, if it's okay with you that we table any discussions on the dumpsters until I email them all out and then everybody actually takes the time and understands them. Okay. Um, I'm okay with that. I think another good um, thing maybe to look into, uh, maybe reach out to some other towns that have been doing it and see what their processes have they been. Don't, they don't do what we, what your, the board has asked. Um, charge for dumpster permits? For commercial buildings. So I know the town of Easton does. So maybe. Uh, well, if you want to reach out to them. Yeah, I can do that. All right, that yeah, would be absolutely. great. Just see how they handle it. Um, Okay, vote to table the um, discussion on the new dumpster guidelines. Do I have a motion? Motion. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to the farmer's market guidelines. <sighs> So I had um, my new grammar teacher um, uh, fix your edit requests, um, and she, um, she's very good at what she does. Trust me when I tell you. Um, okay. So I know that one of your edits that you wanted to list the um, definitions with um, letters. Generally, when you do definitions, you don't number definitions like we did with the dumpster regulation. So the only reason I did it was for it to stay, um, kind of flow with the rest of the guideline, because that's what we did for the rest of the guidelines. Well, these guidelines aren't, the, the format isn't set in stone. You know what I mean? Like, so just like the dumpster guidelines, if you, if you look at the dumpster guidelines, it'll say, Section 1 definitions, and it just lists the definitions in bold and mm -hmm. underlined. And I could do that. I could bold, and well, they are bolded, but I could underline the definition um, so it doesn't look. Yeah, you can. Have you done it like that yet? No. Have you, you edited it yet or no? No. Okay. I just, the only edits that have been done are just your edits. I was just letting you know in the first section <clears throat> why we didn't label them A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's fine. That's fine with me. Okay. All right. So are these, do these reflect the, um, the changes? Of yours, of your suggestions. That's why I gave you both copies. I gave you a copy of your edit and the fresh copy. They don't all of them though. 
I think she just did the grammar ones. And then I know that you had questions. No, there were some grammar ones that, that are. So I think you and Amy need to fight that out. <laughs> hey, I'm going to fight you, Amy. <laughs> okay. So me and Amy can go over that. Um, the grammar corrections. Okay. Um, maybe Thursday morning. Yeah, Thursday morning. Okay, perfect. All right. So, um, unless there are any other questions in regarding to the grammar, let's go over some of the questions that we had. Okay. Um, so the first one is um, for the uh, individual vendors. Should we be requiring any kind of temperature control logs? Or do we or do we require those already? We, we don't require those. Okay. Um, but they know um, it's a requirement anyway. Mm -hmm. They know it's a requirement. So we could certainly add it just to. Um, so basically what it would entail, correct me if I'm wrong, is um, essentially uh, a clipboard and then just an initial saying that they're checking their temperatures what, every four hours. Yeah, um, but that's not something that they would have to provide on a di uh, every single time they go to a farmer's market. So they how just keep their own log. Okay. You know, like um, if you go into any food establishment, they have a log of their um, rinse cycles and their wash cycles. Yeah. They don't give that to me every week. It's, okay. It's your own log. In the event that somebody does come and do a spot inspection, they should have it. So yeah, or of course. If somebody gets sick and then we want to go over and like, oh, we check these temperatures at these times and these were all set. So it could have been from here. If it's on the contract arrival during and then when they leave, I think is what, what I tell them. Perfect. Yeah, I don't check them, but that's the process to yeah. see. So let's build that right into the guideline then. Um, what section do you want that on? Uh, general requirements. Okay, general requirements. Yep. Under, put it as, um, let's put it under F. So let's make this G. There's already a G. Yep, oh, and we're going to push it down. Yep. Mm -hmm. That way you're putting the temperature controls with the label controls, which, sorry. So make it G. Yes, please. So, Deli, when, for the um, farmer's market, is it part of your inspections, like if you would just go and do, a, a, like, an inspection? No. The, no. So anybody that is um, going to the farmer's market, um, they have to have a food permit unless they grow their own food. And I've been working with Allison, and we're, we have all the food permits of the people that are participating. Okay. Um, the other, um, list of vendors, including okay, does, do farmers markets themselves have to acquire a food, per, a permit to we, operate within the town? We, what are you talking about farmers markets themselves? So the entire, the market as a whole? No. Like, okay. she doesn't, they don't have to fill out a permit for me. Okay. To hold a farmer's market. Okay. Would another, would, what if we had like four farmer's markets? They, they can have as many at, at one time at different Like different, places. different, different, different people holding different farmer's markets. Would we then have to require? Well, they would have to have food permits too. Right, so they get, they're, get, they're already going to have their own food permits. You're talking about, do they have to register with the town and get a permit? Correct. For yeah, I don't know if they would have to register with the Board of Selectmen. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so under um, no vendor shall consume or sell any tobacco or alcoholic products, which is uh, D under Section mm -hmm. 1 4. So, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, we do bear gardens, correct? We do. So that's actually considered the, like, actual liquor. It's, the word is very weird because 
we go through the Mass State regulations, which is somehow the same as Brockman. Brockman can change these if they want. Um, it's malt and beer that's considered not alcohol. Okay. <laughs> but they list for a one-day liquor license. So my thought process was to just eliminate that, unless you feel that that needs to be written in there. I think it needs to be written in so there. So there's a, also the state allows you to get a special liquor license, which mm -hmm. allows you to sell cocktails, and we don't want to do that. Okay. Because of the concern of safety. Yep. Um, so that's why mead, beer, wine, but no alcohol. Got <laughs> it. I mean, yeah. Can we say cocktails? I don't know. I would just leave. No, I would just, just leave, leave it with the alcohol. Then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just struggle with the definition of the word. Yeah, so there's alcohol, and then I think <laughs> I'm thinking fermented. Well, I guess alcohol is fermented, too. I don't quite know either, but that's how the mass.gov site says. <laughs> that's a show. So, and it says alcohol in the in the mass.gov sites? Yeah, it's worded both, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Rockland's never given a cocktail or a special permit to serve. I'm not condoning, yeah. by the way. Yeah. That we no, no, no. sell cocktails so, like, at the farmers market. We haven't had to. We wouldn't have to take that off because we haven't had it. <laughs> um, and I don't think they want to either. But yeah, it's it is confusing. I, I guess we could come up. Beer, but that's, I'm not. We could even write with the exception of. Right. What do you call it, Allison? So the, it's called it's beer, malt, mead, and malt and water. I, 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 would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I think that it just, we're just saying that no vendor shall sell or any tobacco or alcohol products because they can't. Okay. I, uh, I, to me, the definition of alcohol encompasses like beer oh, and malt. Well, no, because it's separate. Di it's different because there's beer and wine stores that don't sell alcohol. Okay. Yeah. I clearly don't know a lot about alcohol. Okay. All right. Fine. We'll do it. We'll leave it in there. Um. I. I just. You skipped something. Um. Up top under second secondary vendor. I would like just to take that completely out. Um, I don't know. I don't think it makes any sense because so this was adopted from another community and um, they really wanted to keep it more farmer's markety, where <clears throat> the Rex farmer's market, they're allowing more Artisan. artisans and such. Okay. So, I, I mean, I don't, think, I don't think that whole thing is necessary. Just to, they revised the one that we mimicked. They revised theirs and they they switched to. They have. Yeah. To so take it to yeah. take it off. They took it off and they had more artisans as well. They wanted only twenty five percent. Yeah. Extra artisans and majority of food yeah. farms. Um, like an older traditional farmers market, but that's obviously changing all around. Mm -hmm. Right. So that last line, Fine. I'm saying we can scratch it. I'm okay with that. Are you yeah, okay with that, well. Michelle? Yeah. Okay. The other question I did have um, is in here it says no more than 25% of vendors at the farmer's market, maybe secondary vendors. That's We're getting I, rid of that. Yeah, That's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Then we have the trash receptacles. Um, um, I, I just want to take you back to under general requirements. You want to know the cost of the permit? Well, we already asked that. That's the permit in general as a whole for the farmer's market. We're not, we've already right, established right. Oh, that well, they're I thought not you getting. Meant, like individuals attending the no. farmer's market. Well, that would be their food permit, correct? Right. Okay. I don't collect fees for the artisans and such. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Give that. Okay. 
Um, okay, the trash. Yeah, but I don't remember what I meant. <laughs> Type in location of any barricades required to protect the public and the vendors. Vehicle traffic flow to include layout of vehicle parking. And that is done by the right. I was just going to say, is this us? Yeah, this isn't us. No. Okay. The rec department. This is for them to follow the guidelines and then ask the. And if for anybody else that wants to have a farmer's market. Okay. I, I, I just have to follow up on the fact that. Who approves a farmer's market? And I don't know that answer. Exactly. Like, who would approve these vehicle traffic flows? Select would it be man. us? Like, if... Select 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 okay. Yeah. But I don't know, like, if Kathy and five of her friends said, I want to start a farmer's market, I don't know who she would go to to get that approved or if it is something that they have to do. Or she can... Yeah, that's what... Laura, you just said the select minute will go through, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. I'll follow up and uh, I'll follow up and say I'll ask the other communities too what they do. Okay. Um, trash receptacles um, shall be provided by the market manager for the common areas of the market. Um, do we currently put lids on those trash receptacles? Oh, they all have lids. Um, Perfect. But can we just yeah what back you got? up to see? Um, you state any specific rules to reference? The all processed foods should comply with the requirements set forth by federal, state, and local laws, regulations, and rules. I could just put that as um, all processed foods should comply with. Yeah, I'm okay with in, what it reads. I can put in um, the CMR. Fine. I could just add that. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so we're already done with that beer garden, and then E is good, and then the F, trash receptacles, they all have, they all have dump, dumpsters all have to have lids. Um, okay, but not just, um. Actually, hmm. Like trash cans. You your trash yeah. cans. No, I don't think so. Oh, so we use, obviously, the, the cans that run up there, mm -hmm. we use, and they're emptied every... Yeah, I don't think every we day. need lids to be added. Or every event, at the end of my event, they're all emptied and brought back to the bathhouse. Have you found it, Have you found them to be okay, easy enough to maintain and change? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, as necessary. With my assistance. Okay. Um, but we put extra out just because of food trucks. And the food trucks bring their own trash as well. Okay. Um, yes. And it hasn't. I mean, the only overloading issue I think was salt fest. That would be my concern. Is just the overloading issue, and then. Um, you know, if it's not changed in a timely fashion, oh, yeah. so every flies. Day, at, at the end of every day of camp, they change it. Okay. At the end of every market, they're changed and brought and put away. So they're not even left out. Okay. Um, actually, the, the football or the sports ones are left out. But that's something yeah. I think the parks yeah. department. Yeah, the parks yeah. department. Yeah. Okay. Are there any recycling boxes with the cans? Um, yeah. No, but I'm actually building one to hopefully donate each each market. Um, Perfect. But that's just a, a not... Yeah, we we had a discussion about that. Maybe making a bin and maybe donating the cans to either the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts or the food pantry or the music program. As something, so, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, I know. I think maybe they could. Yeah, take turns. Oh. Take turns. Yeah. But it's just a cage right now with a um, chicken wire around it, that way it doesn't collect any water, or you know, sludge. And uh, and then we'll dump it into a bag and donate it to whoever wants to take it, or whichever yeah. wants, is going to do it that week. I just hope the people are respectful and only put in cans. Oh well, it's actually going to be a basketball hoop, so. Oh stop! Oh, it. I like that. Yeah, I do too. And then it's like very visual. We'll put it right in the middle. Oh, that's and awesome. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Huh? Should be soccer. Uh, <laughs> are you a FIPS or I don't um, So I'm okay with that then, not requiring lids. Um, are you okay with that, Delshawn and Michelle? Yes. Okay. So we'll get rid of that. 
um, number eight, you state 40 percent, 40 degrees or less. Yeah, I think that this is, I don't think that that needs to be mentioned. I think yeah. that that's just a given. Right. I was just thinking out loud at that point. So disregard that note. And then we answered the clean continuous responsibility. That is um, the market manager, correct? Yep. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so the sale of shellfish, finfish, and crustaceans is prohibited unless a vendor is already licensed as a wholesale seafood dealer with the base of operation by the Division of Marine Fisheries and obtains a Rockland Board of Health retail food permit. I don't know why I said explain. I understand that. That makes complete sense. Okay. <laughs> Do you want me to explain it? Yeah, go so, ahead. Go, go like, for it. Like yeah. um, Nautical Mayo. He's a wholesale. Okay. He also did... Farmers markets last year, and he sold lobster. And there's a whole like other requirement when you're selling self shellfish. Mm -hmm. um, the state requires you to have a special permit as well. Okay. So, and and they meet all those criteria. But I don't know if they're coming back. No, but Island Wild Island Wild Wild Island oysters. Uh, these okay. people are stressing me out last minute. I, know, I, know. I don't. But they're not selling. They're already selling, say, yes. lobster salad out of the. So this one is not consumable. Last year she said it was consumable because she yes. has a brick and mortar witness. Yeah. So she has her food establishment license plus her um, wholesale um, retail seafood license. Um, this one is a distributor and a. Um, uh, like a, a smart living, not as local, but like, um, what is it? Uh, she's a scientist who, they wholesale, they're like a delivery service. So they go coming and they have, they're going to have some stuff. They have like jam and stuff. Yeah. So they'll have to have both permits, food establishment because they're serving consumables, and then a wholesaler's license for anything that they're going to sell, whether it be like frozen salmon, go straight to some of and if they do that, they have to, they're required to have a um, refrigerated truck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions on that, Michelle? No. Okay. Um, under L, so we mentioned cut products that are PHFs, melons, raw seeds, sprouts, cut tomatoes, must be kept refrigerated or below 41 degrees. However, in section 1-3, we said we do not allow cut Product. Okay, so when 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 this is, they're totally two different things. So okay. if a person that grows tomatoes and um, corn and peppers and kale, they can't cut that there. They have to sell it, sell it whole how it is, how it's grown. Okay. They don't need a food permit. However, um, uh, halfway it's cafe. Has sliced tomatoes and all that, so that's it's okay for them. Okay. Because they're preparing it inside their food truck. I mean, we could totally take it out, but. So basically, someone who's picking vegetables to sell the vegetables, they're not going to cut those. They're going to sell them as they are, one whole piece. So they don't need a food permit. But if they're going to sell a fruit salad or a so it's essentially platter, the difference between a truck. That's refrigerated. It's something yeah. that's planning Prepared on being consumed. And grown. Yeah. Okay. Prepared and grown. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Leave it alone. Um, cooking demonstrations with small samples, small samples of cooked food may be prepared and offered at the farmer's market for promotional and or educational value with Board of Health approval. How often does this happen? Um, I don't know, but can we? <laughs> that's all right. We Would you like I, that? You, you know, that, that's a, yeah. And then yeah, you have yeah. to get the fire department involved. Yeah. I mean, we can totally take that out. Field. Yeah, let's take that out. Uh, well, as long as you're okay with that, Michelle. Yeah, no.
Okay, under permit application and requirements, do we have a deadline with how long before the set of date of the farmer's market we require their paperwork to be in? Oh, I require it months in advance. Okay. Because, and, and it drives me crazy the amount of people that come at the last minute. Today I got a list for of um, food trucks that are going to be at Rockland Day, and how many of them? Four or five of them don't even have their permit in. That's stressful. Do you have a cutoff, though? Like, this is the cutoff, and if you don't have this stuff, then you, you, you can't go. No, I don't. You I, just have to run around and get everything. And it's up to them to get all the required information in. If they want to participate in the farmer's market, it's best that they get the information in before the farmer's market. And I tell them. You know, if somebody calls me up on Friday, it happened last year, yeah, exactly. and I said, no way, absolutely no way. You, you, we cannot get all the required information in time for you to go on Saturday. That's fair. So we have said no. That's fair. Uh, is it better for you if we have a set cutoff date? Well, um, that, nothing's better for me. I mean, it, better for me would be, but you just, the, the problem is is farmer's markets are pop-ups. You know what I mean? Like people pop into farmer's market. They, some want to do every single one, and some are like, oh, I'm going Parsing to the carrot, farmer's the market in the Hanover yeah. this week. I'll go to the one in Rockland next week. And so, they, need, they need a permit for every farmer's market? That, no. Yes. Oh, they do? Mm -hmm. Okay. For every town that they do, they ha they're required. Right, but what if they do, like, um, Allison's got five market. farmer's markets. No, but they're permitted per year. They're permitted per, per year. Okay. Some choose to do just a day event. Okay. And, and why, those, why would they do that? Is it just cheaper? Yeah. Okay. It's a difference between 50 and $100. I actually wouldn't mind setting a farmer's market no, scratch that. We have permit food permits. Sorry. Because mobile trucks have a different permit fee. Food establishments have a different permit fee. Retailers have a different permit fee. And wholesalers have a different permit fee. So if any of those people that need to be permitted to go to the farmer's market, they're going to get whacked with a fee, farmer's market fee from them. So. I adjust according to yours. So. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they are really like mom and pops. I don't want to, they're just trying to make a little money. Most of them probably pay more than what they make. They just enjoy doing it. Okay. It's a really good experience for even our residents in Rockland. I, I, my daughter loved going up there. <laughs> okay. I, I, we can overlook that. <laughs> Um, as long as you're okay with it. I mean, you're the one that has to deal with the influx. I give them deadlines that aren't really Okay. <laughs> I give them so deadlines. Deadline that usually Tuesday so I can get the list to Delhi and Tahini, and if they're not done, then I have to, I tell them that they can't come. Yeah. That's There's been reasonable. Times, though, last year when we had the beer garden, it was very important to me that we had enough food when we're serving beer in the same section. So that was a pretty big week for her. Hmm. Like after <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm okay with that if you are not putting a deadline in. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get rid of that. Where was that? That was um, under the permit and application requirements. Section 105. It was never um, part of oh, the added. literature. It's, um, I was oh. going to add it in. Oh, okay. Um, okay, any changes in the inventory list will be submitted to the Rockland Board of Health. Um, included with the completed application, the inventory list of products to be sold. Okay. Okay. And how good are we about collecting these lists, these menus, per se? Are they ever changing, or are they pretty... Yeah, it's hard to get a menu... 
you can get a menu from a food truck. Yeah. Um, basically, a lot of them are, yeah, we, we get menus, right? Yeah. Okay. The people that we have authority over. Okay. Any products that have not been locally grown must be posted. Why is that? That's so farm can't come in and go, you know, somewhere and buy the fruit and just bring it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. But yeah. for example, uh, this is just as it pertains to like farms, right? I mean, if you have like a restaurant there, are they going to post? Yeah, no. I think it's just, I'm, I'm it's, wrong, but I think it's just farms. It's just farms. Cows okay. and. Um, if you're learning mushroom chicken from somewhere else, you would have to list that. Unproduced. Any changes? Okay, so we, we probably need to clarify that then. That's not pretty, that's not clear. Locally grown must be posted. Um, any thoughts on that, Allison, how you would read it, word, word it? it. Um, any products that have not been locally... Imported? Well, I just want to make it clear. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, it okay. in my mind. Okay. So any products that have not been locally grown and have been imported? And have been imported? Yep. Yes. Must be posted. <clears throat> Ready to move on on that one? Yeah. Okay. So vendors already obtaining a food permit in the town of Rockland will still be subject to, to submit a list of it items to be sold to the Board of Health. Reserves the right to charge fees per the approved fee schedule. That fee schedule, what is that referencing? That's referencing if you're a mobile food, if you're retail, if you're... But we're already, so vendors already obtaining a food permit. So that would have already been satisfied on exactly. that line. Okay. Yeah. So I, we can get rid of that. Get rid of what? The Board of Health reserves the right to charge. Oh, you want to get rid of that? The Board of Health gives you the right to charge fees approved. Well, I don't think we should get rid of that because the, we do charge fees for the approved fee schedule. Right, but I believe it's referencing vendors that have already obtained a food permit. Is that not accurate? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you want to just scratch that line. Yes. Okay. Yep. Oh. Unless you have an issue with that. Okay. And so your answer to do they still need a food permit, a um, farmer's market permit is? No. No. And then you can disregard the um, uncut fruit. We've already established that. Okay. Um, all other vendors will be required to obtain a food permit license if they are selling. Okay, that makes sense now that I understand the difference. And it look, uh, I think that all vendors should fill out a food permit. We do that already. Yeah. Okay. And you already answered my question. One permit per farmer's market or one permit per season? Yes. We already answered that. Okay. Last page. Oh, so that <clears throat> all that why I can scratch out? Yep. Okay. Yeah, those have already been answered. <clears throat> um, we've removed secondary vendors, correct? No, 
No, we only just remove that one line on second vendors. We only remove not more than 25%. Okay, so then um, under C, just to, to mention prime, both primary and secondary vendors. Okay. Okay, so notwithstanding the above, the Board of Health or its authorized agent will conduct at least one inspection during the farmer's market season to ensure sanitary conditions. Are we doing that? Yes, I did that. I did it once last year. Per entire farmer's market or per food truck? No, just per farmer's market. Okay, so what if <clears throat> we have a food truck that does the first week when you inspect it, but two weeks later there's like four different food trucks? They've already been inspected. By? Me. Okay or another town that gave me their inspection. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? Um, So the Board of Health may grant a variance to any of the provisions of these farmers market regulations when in its opinion the strict enforcement would do manifest injustice and does not jeopardize. So give me an example of that. I don't know where you are. I am section 1-8 variance. Okay. So um, can we just go back up to all the other things? I can scratch out the primary vendor, all that other stuff. No, so, no, I'm sorry, primary vendor, we're going to put in there. I know you're putting primary vendor on C. Yep. The Board of Health authorized agent upon receipt of complaint may reasonably conduct an unannounced inspection. Yep. And then. That's fine. We don't need to put it in E as well. You don't need to, all that red? No. Is all good. You can, I yep. can scratch it out. Per vendor or market, we've already answered. Okay. And the rest is just grammar. All right. Okay, section eight, variance. Board of Health may grant a variance to any provision of the, when it's an opinion in district in force, when due manifest injustice does not jeopardize the public health. Well, the only variance that I would be able, that I'd think of on that one would be um, the, Goats. Oh, yeah. Petting zoo. We have them a certain amount of feet away from the market we were selling. Okay. And dogs as well. Okay, that makes sense. Do you have any other questions on that, Michelle? Wait, you, dogs? No dogs. No dogs. Okay, unless they're a service animal, because that's the part of it. Okay. Any was other? there a petting zoo last year? No. Okay. This is new? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions on section 1-8? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. And just add um, state sanitary code and the local regulations of the Rockland Board of Health. So I just wanted to reword that. in the local regulations, as it pertains to these regulations or any other Manner, the Rockland Board of Health deems necessary to ensure the safety and health of the public under E. So after, in the local regulations of the? Farmer's market as it pertains to these regulations or any other manner to the Rockland Board of Health deems necessary. may deem necessary to ensure the safety and health of the public. Okay, so you want that at the end of ensure sanitary conditions? Yes, please. Any other questions on these, Michelle, that you might have? So, Sean, do you have any other questions? Um, I don't. Nope. But okay. what we could do is 
I will make the changes, revisions, and then we can Perfect. put it on another agenda for another review. Perfect. Um, and then maybe before that agenda comes out, we can just get emailed the update. Oh, absolutely. And go through it. Allison, do you have any other, um, thank you for being here, but do you have any other insights no. we should be aware of? Okay. I'll also, I also give them to her and Jean to go over to. Okay, perfect. Um, next item on the agenda, the town rat infestation update. So there really isn't much of an update. If, um, if people call, sometimes we have maybe a call once every two weeks maybe now. Um, people just need to be vigilant and check their property and make sure it's clean, get rid of any compost. Um, people that have chickens or exotic birds need to clean up their seeds. These, um, these rodents uh, got pushed out of their home because of the high water tables. Rockland's not the only community that is um, going through this, and we're all basically just telling the homeowners that hire an exterminator and do due diligence. Um, we have a flyer on the website if anybody needs the information on the rats. But I, again, like I said, I know people at this point st have stopped calling because the, there's, the town doesn't take any position on it. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way that the town would be able to ever go out and bait trap and hire an exterminator for the whole town. Um, you just have to be vigilant and figure out a person how they want to, I mean, obviously they know they, they don't suggest that you use poison because then there's the hawks and everything else, um, that Mother Nature takes its course, but baiting them and discarding them is the only, there's the only guidance. It's. So it hasn't changed. Yeah, so basically it hasn't gotten any better. Are you just not receiving as many calls or emails? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's getting better, if one particular person that has complained um, hasn't seen any um, in a while in the same neighborhood, but in a, that same exact neighborhood, somebody else is, sees them more. Do you have any other questions on that? I know that this was... An agenda item you wanted on? Yeah, no, I just kind of wanted an update on it because I, obviously, when you're out and about in a, tour, a, a grocery store, somebody will bump into you and ask you questions. So I kind of just wanted to bring it up and just kind of put it out there in a public forum that this is what's going on. And yeah, we, we, we everybody can hear the same, same information at one time. Okay. Any other questions regarding that, Michelle? No. Okay. Uh, COVID-19 update. Okay, so our numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, so the COVID-19 numbers are actually climbing. Um, we're up to 175, which is, in January we had a really, really high number, but that was before they changed everything, that, that was the month, and every other month has been going down pretty, you know, substantially. Last month we only had like 96 or something, so we're up to 175, and remember, those are the only tests that are being reported, so those that are going to the doctor, that are going to the clinics, or that are going to uh, the hospitals, those are the numbers. So I have 148 adults and 27 um, kids that have had COVID throughout the month, we still have another week, so we we'll probably hit maybe 200. But this time I did include, because Michelle, you wanted to know about the school. Yeah. And I do keep track of them. But their numbers are not added into our numbers because they're home testing. Right. And remember, they're not reportable. Um, but they had 149 in May, um, which is a lot for them. That's in um, addition to the 127? I'm mm -hmm. sorry for interrupting. Yeah, so my 175 is separate. Uh -huh. um, there might be one or two that, you know. But So what's happening with a lot, um, parents are get testing their children and not really believing the results. So they'll go get a PCR or, they, you know, or go to their doctors. And that's why sometimes so there's a couple that overlap, but not many. Okay. So they had 41 staff members so far positive, and that's huge. Um, and then they had 108 students. But the good news is, you know, the, their numbers are coming down. So they're actually doing a little better than the town, actually. Their, their numbers are actually, they're coming down. They had like, I don't know, 50 or 60 in one week. And they report every Wednesday. And again, I keep track of that. Also. Right. 
And so I think we're up to like 20, which is unbelievable. That's huge uh, for the school. So they're, they're actually doing okay. They're doing, they're hanging in there. Um, so our total, grand total with all the, the schools now, we have about 125, uh, excuse me, 325 um, with, this, with, the, with our residents and our schools. schools. And again, remember, they're doing their home testing program, and that is not reportable. Things are going to change with that, though. I know there's a, um, a webinar tomorrow. On so, so something's coming up with them. I'm not sure yet what, uh, but it, they have a, something about their testing program tomorrow. So that might change a little bit this next year. Because remember, sooner or later, I mean, this is a virus that's going to be around, and we need to get back to what we do with the flu. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and th So that's the talk now, uh, dropping that five-day isolation period that we do now. Um, well, Massachusetts hasn't done that yet, but there is talk that they may do something like that. Drop it to Meaning all together? All or together. Because you don't isolate for the flu, do you? No. And it's contagious, and mm -hmm. it's as contagious as all these Right. So there's talk about that, too. But we have to get back to, to normal. Normal, so, yeah. Um, but again, hopefully we're going outside. Summer's coming. Maybe numbers will go down. You know, we'll see. But um, yeah, so it's kind of alarming this month um, with these numbers. Uh, but in, in the... Um, in the state in general, the wastewater numbers are really coming down in other towns. So I'm, we don't do wastewater surveillance here, um, but I'm hoping they have to be coming down. You know, too, so we'll see. What town does surveillance water testing it's around the us? MWRA, so it's you know it's at Weymouth, that whole group, okay. and then they have the south and they have a north. They do it. Um, so there'd be no reason to believe that we're that far off from what's going yeah. on in Weymouth. Exactly. Okay. In, in other towns too, like Randolph and stuff like that. So, okay. Uh, you know, and again, they're coming down. I mean, they're going to come down sooner or later. This is a high month. I'm hoping that June, you know, things will get better. Okay. So we'll see. So, Would you be able to keep us surprised of what happens tomorrow? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, any other input regarding the COVID-19 update? Any questions? Thank you very much. You're Health agents report. Next item on the agenda. Um, obviously, I don't have much to report. Um, I, I gave you guys a list of the things that I that took me out of the office. Um, it's a rough draft, obviously. Um, but first, good news is um, the Mass uh, Board Health Association um, had additional grant money. Um, that I did um, ask for, and we were able to get $18,000. I reached out to uh, the fire department and the police department to see where this money could be used uh, towards COVID expenses. If, if they had anything that they needed to reallocate that they took out of their budget that was COVID-related, they're all set with their budgets. Um, so we reached out to the school and we're able to help the school because the school has a significant um, deficit on their expenses. Okay. So I'm working that out between um, the town administrator and Jane Hackett. Okay. Is that for like PPE and stuff or that is just to replenish the money that has been used for COVID? It had 41 staff members out. So yeah. Each one is out for five days and they had money last year and, and those days were paid for and I believe They've come to an end of that, so they're yeah. paying for all the, some of them are up for 10 days. Yeah. Because if you're, you know, test on day five, like they do, then they're out for another five days. So yeah. it's been, so they're getting, get, they're going to get hot, yeah. just by staff. Mm -hmm. They had some unpaid bills too, so it's going to be, it's going to be helpful. Um, there is additional funding, and I sent the email and said, yep, we'll take it. So I like free money. Um, and another point on free money is I am dedicating myself to start the grant for the recycling center. Um, it's a lot of work, and I'm just starting to prepare um, to get that done. Last year, I think we got $21,000. Um, we bought recycling uh, containers for it and used some of it to on the maintenance over at the recycling center. I have purchased... Compost bins with that money as well. Um, however, they are in back order, and there is no time in sight. I've never, I have not been given a delivery date. 
um, when to expect those. Um, I am reaching out to uh, Black Earth um, to see if we could get um, a, their service here. They service in another town, and I'm not too sure if it's Easton or Randolph, but they service one particular community, and they go around to people's homes and pick up their compost bins and dispose of them, and that takes money out of the tonnage it takes weight out of the tonnage however there's a fee so there's really not a savings because you still have to play the company that's going to pick up that stuff and and that would be on the taxpayer so okay. but there's options um, the vouchers are available we started giving them out last Monday um, office has been steady. Uh, residents just need to show proof of um, ownership. I know that we spoke about it earlier. Um, if it's a tenant and they have to request their voucher from their landlord. So the voucher only goes to the landlord, the owner of the property, and their bill has to be current. The, the new green sticker is available for fiscal year 23. Right now the red ones is still good to the end of June. However, we are giving out the green ones for fiscal year 23 already. If um, somebody goes in, and I put it at the end of July, if anybody goes to the recycling center at the end of July, there is a small grace period. If you go to the recycling center, they will take your red sticker and give you the form and tell you to go to the board of health to get the green one. Um, Another reminder to residents that they can have their bill emailed directly to them. I get the bill quicker than the bill gets mailed out because there's a whole process that the mailing company has. And again, we are switching mailing companies going forward for fiscal year 23. Um, we're still providing test kits. Um, I'm still dropping off test kits and uh, people can come. We were giving out four. We've kind of just taken back and started giving out two or three, um, depending on the need of the family. Uh, there are only two hazardous days left. Um, June 4th, they're in Pembroke, Duxbury, and Kingston. And June 18th, situate in Cohasset. Rockland residents must register by calling. They can call the Board of Health and we can give them the information to register or they can register directly online. Um, it's there's a link online where they can register as well. I thought I brought the hazardous waste day. Yeah. Yeah, South Shore Recycling Co-op is where they would get the information. Or they could just do this. It's on the website, the little QU code. And we haven't, we haven't had many Rockland residents this year, which is a good thing. How do we get the word out for that? How do we get out the word for that? Um, I, I post it on WRPS. Um, it's on the website. Um, I believe when it first started in spring, I think we put it on the town's Facebook page. Okay. Um, a lot of residents know about it. They're only twice a year. It's in the fall, uh, spring and fall. Okay. <clears throat> Not sure if you have any questions on any of the inspections that... Are you still going, Dolly? Oh, I'm not. Oh, Are I'm you done? waiting for you guys. Oh, I thought you were going to read in this. <laughs> no, so. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just took a nap. C correct me if I'm wrong, but with the full staff now, we haven't had to close down the office for this, correct? We've had coverage. Um, nope, that's not true. We, I think we had to shut down one day um, when Amy was sick and I had something to do. Okay, I think we talked for, about that. Though, and right? then there was okay. a day that, like, we closed for lunch. Okay, that's fine. But overall, we're doing, with the full staff, we're doing much better. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Do you have any questions on that, Michelle? Okay. 
Anything else? No. Anybody? You don't have any questions. Okay. Next item on the agenda is... Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, pursuant to MGL... Um, um, Chairman, before you start doing that, sure. I just want to um, record this part of the meeting. Sure, absolutely. Even though WRP... Actually, I just want to say that again. So I'm starting to record this part of the meeting sure. with my own device, even though WRPS is also recording. Yep, that's fine. That's fine with me. Are you okay? Yep, that's fine. Yep. Um, so pursuant to MGLC 30A, Section 21A1, discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff, member, or individual. First, I would like to say that these are mass general law wordings. They're not anything that I've come up with. Um, they're just what I think needs to be on there for the discussion that we're going to have. Um, What's this discussion about? So I think we talked about it a little bit on the phone. Um, my concerns regarding how we're permitting people and um, not necessarily having the documentation that we need in order to be issuing them a permit. Um, so I'm actually going to stop you and I'm not going to participate in this discussion. Okay. But I think this is a big problem. Are you sure you don't want to discuss it, particularly where it relates to camps? I am absolutely certain. Um, I'm not sure if you followed up with that Mass General Law. Yeah. There's certain requirements. I should have been notified 48 hours in okay. advance. Um, I was not notified in 48 hours, and it was also my, if you're going to bring up my work performance, then I have the ability to decide whether or not it's an executive session or open session. That's not true. You do, and I, and I only know this because I've, I've looked into it. So I did notify you on the phone. Um, you did not notify me in writing. If you okay, like, so it needs to be done in writing. I could, I could pull up the Mass General Law and read it to you. Okay. Then the meeting, so, and I might be wrong here, but this is what the Attorney General led me to believe. The open session, if we decide to have it an open session, it cannot then go into an executive session. If we have an executive session, then you can request that it be heard in open session. At least that's what the Attorney General led me to believe. Um, no, that's not oh. true. Okay, so they were wrong. Okay. So I'll call the Attorney General tomorrow. Okay. So you don't want to discuss the camps and the restaurants? No, I don't want to discuss those because those aren't something that you would, you want to embarrass me or humiliate me in person. I think that um, we're professionals and if you have an issue with anything that I've done yeah. in the office, then I think that we should have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and speak about it, and then I can inform you on those issues. I don't think it's a necessary topic to be discussed here. If I fact fail to um, satisfy what you're looking for, then I would entertain something like that. But I don't think that this discussion um, should be labeled as that kind of agenda item, and I'm not going to take part in it. Okay, I just want to make it clear that I did attempt to address it in office and you didn't satisfy what I had to say. But you don't want to have it a discussion here in open session, so I'll have to figure out. Um, obviously, camps for me are a big issue, so we'll have to figure out how we can discuss this. You can certainly, when you come in the office on Thursday, I can certainly sit down with you on that one camp that we did not permit. I welcome that discussion. How many camps did we permit last year? Zero. We had COVID. There were camps last year, though. Not to my knowledge. I'm going to stop because you've, you've determined that you don't want to have this conversation here. That's correct. That's your right to do that. So that's fine. Um, so we'll have to figure out another way that we can um, work to make sure that... Maybe put it under the agenda item like you did the other things and not as a discipline and citing mass general law. I mean, we're going over farmer market regulations. We could go over permits. 
Can yeah. Put that on the agenda. There's specifically, though, a couple of issues that I had regarding and we could, that. We could definitely discuss it in uh, under a different agenda item. This is the agenda item that I chose, though. Okay. Well, I'm not to participate. You don't have to. Uh, and again, I will figure out from here how we can handle uh, going forward to make sure that our camps are being permitted um, like they should be. Um, so we can definitely move forward from that, and I will uh, go back to the drawing board and figure out um, how I can undertake this important task. Um, next item on the agenda, other business not reasonably anticipated by the chairman. Does anybody else um, have any business here that they would like to discuss? I do not. Okay. Um, I would like to then entertain an adjourn, uh, an motion to adjourn the meeting uh, for Board of Health May 24th. It is now 7.16 p.m. Do I have a motion? Motion. I have a second. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good.